In this video, I'll show you how to create an easy and reusable flip card interaction in Adobe Captivate. First of all, let me say that uh, members of my YouTube channel at the free download level or higher can download a sample project file that contains this interaction already built for them. For the rest of you, you can of course follow along with the instructions that are coming up in this video here. This was inspired by the flip cards or flash cards that I've seen in competing web-based authoring tools. And I wanted to create something simple and easy to use in Adobe Captivate. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need is a rectangle. So I'm gonna select a rectangle and hold down my shift key so I get a perfect square in this case and draw that on my slide here. Now I'm gonna create an object style for this, but first let's make some changes to the appearance of this object. Uh, at first we're going to change the fill style from this default blue color to an image fill. Now I've already prepared a background image that includes a little flip icon in the bottom right hand corner similar to how that other authoring tool displays this. So I'm going to navigate by using the folder icon in the image fill option for this shape and going out to my desktop where I have this flashcard background.png file already created. So we'll go ahead and we'll open that up. You'll see of course the resize crop image. This image is 512 by 512 and of course you're welcome to use it for those that download the interaction. And uh, for the rest of you, you can make anything with just a little icon that indicates uh, what this is all about. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now at first, I'm not seeing my little icon there because of course the tile effect is defaulted to top left. In this case, I want to show that in the bottom right. So we're just going to change that to bottom right. And there's my flip icon. Perfect. So the other thing I want to do is create an effect of a 3D effect that shows sort of a drop shadow behind all of this. So I'm going to select an outer drop shadow here. We'll go with the center option so that the drop shadow is directly behind our object. And uh, I'm going to increase the opacity to 40%, whatever you like, whatever looks appropriate for your particular design. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's start off by putting some text on this particular flip card. This would be the front of the card. So maybe a keyword or phrase or title for this particular content. So I'm just going to put front of card. Now my text is white, so we're going to need to change that. And I will make that a very dark gray. I think the font should be a little larger for the front of the card, so I'm going to go with 25 points there. Now, let's go in and turn this into a button for starters. So I'm going to select Use as Button. And then I'm going to go into State View. Now it's just picking up the normal rollover and down state for the default smart shape style here. In this case, I'm only going to have my selected or clicked on state. So I'm going to first of all delete the rollover and down states here. And I'm going to duplicate the normal state here. So we're going to duplicate state. Now, by default, it wants to use one of the inbuilt states that I just deleted. In this case, I want to make that a custom state. And I'm going to call this state clicked. So it'll be an exact duplicate of the front of the card. But I'm going to make the text a little smaller because usually a click to reveal or a flip card will have more information on the back of the card here. So we'll make that 18 points and I'll just have the text. Of course, you can make it whatever text you want. These will be easy to edit later on as well. So I'll just have this say back of card for now. So I can exit from my multi-state object here. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. 
Now, before we write the advanced action for this, let's make sure that we've given this object a name. So we'll call this flip card. Now, don't worry about this advanced action. This is going to be one of those advanced actions that you write once. And then, of course, you can use it over and over again without any modification required. So let's go ahead and select the project drop down menu and select advanced actions. We'll call this flip card and we're going to do several things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use an effect within advanced actions here. We'll choose apply effect. We'll choose our object in question, which is flip card. And we're going to choose an exit effect. And specifically, we're looking for collapse across. Now I'm going to click on this parameters icon here and just change the settings of this effect. We're going to only make it happen for 0.3 seconds and I'm going to increase this ease effect all the way to 100%. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now, in order to actually see that effect before we run the next action in our advanced action, we need to delay the next action by a certain number of seconds. In this case, that same 0.3 seconds for our flip card effect. So we're going to choose literal and type in 0.3 seconds. At this point, we are going to go to the next state of our multi-state object, our flip card, and then we're going to apply another final effect here. So this will be apply effect to our flip card. And in this case, we're going to use the entrance effect, which is the exact opposite of collapse across. In this case, it's stretch across. We're going to use the same parameters we did before, 0.3 seconds and 100% on the ease effect there. We'll click OK. Now, here's the thing. I like to save my advanced actions first. And then in this case, I'm going to save this as a shared action. The reason I save it as a regular advanced action first is I might need to refer back to what I was doing in this particular advanced action. But we're going to go ahead and save as a shared action. And when you do that, you can fill out the description. And we'll just place a description down here. Flip card and I'll hit save. Click OK and we can go ahead and close. So in order for this to work, this will be where we run the shared action from. So we'll select actions for our flip card itself and the action will be execute shared action. We'll choose flip card if it's not already selected and then click on the action parameters icon and simply select flip card. Save. We're done. I'm going to add the hand cursor so that it changes the appearance of the cursor when users roll over it with a mouse. But I'm also going to disable the click sound because I'm not a big fan of the click sound. So this is ready to test out. Let's just do a preview in HTML5 in browser. So here's our front of the card. There's the back of the card and we can close it, flip it around however many times that we wish. Now, some of you might be thinking, okay, that's great. That's going to take, you know, five minutes or so to do every single time I want to create one of these flip cards. But here's what's cool. If I select this and press control D on my keyboard or command D, if you're a Mac user, I get an exact copy of the flip card, but I get an exact copy with that shared action and the appropriate parameter already selected. So if I wanted to create three flip cards on a single slide, I can do exactly that. And just a matter of duplicating this object as many times as you need it, and obviously editing the text so that it has some meaningful content on the front and the back of the flip card. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction.
Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.